Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here today. We're back on PTCGO continuing our Cosmic Eclipse coverage and we're taking a break from looking at new archetypes to kind of upgrade an existing one uh, that's been around for a few months now and that's going to be Bahian. This is a card that came out back in Unified Minds and kind of made an unexpected uh, splash at Worlds this past year. Hasn't really done too much since but it actually gained some really important new cards uh, from the new Cosmic Eclipse set, most importantly the new Lily's Poke Doll. It's going to be, I think, the big boost that this deck gets that really takes it from being a meme to something actually kind of worth considering. So, if you guys aren't too familiar with Behem, let's take a look at it. It came out back in Unified Minds, like I said, to stage one. Attacks for three colorless energy, does 90. You shuffle this Pokemon, all cards attached to it back in your deck, and your opponent can't play any items from their hand during their next turn. So, Typically, the big downside to Triple Acceleration Energy is that you have to discard it after you use it, but since you're shuffling it back into your deck, that actually happens before it gets discarded. It means you don't have to discard your Triple Acceleration Energies, which is pretty huge. That gets around an otherwise massive downside to the card. And so basically, we're just trying to loop this guy every turn and just continuously item lock our opponent by doing 90 damage over and over and over, slowing them down. And so one of the big downsides to this card before is just trying to figure out what you promote in between every time you use this attack because you shuffle us back in and you have to promote something into the active spot. And previously we've seen things like Gumi and Aloha Ninetales to be your preferred wall Pokemon. But now that we have uh, Lily's Pokedol in the mix, we can actually promote that and not give up any prizes in the process on our opponent's turn, which is really, really cool. So the core strategy of the deck really hasn't changed much, but Lily's Pokedol is going to be the boost it needs to, I think, be a little bit more formidable. So this is what the whole deck is going to be built around. We're playing a 4-4 line of Behem, but we also have a 3-3 line of Pidgeotto as well. And we're playing Pidgeotto for the air mail ability. Once during your turn before you attack, you may look at the top two cards of your deck, put one in your hand, put the other on the bottom of your deck. So this is going to be an important way we can keep digging every turn to ensure that we can find those crucial pieces every turn when we shuffle them back into our deck. So that's why we're playing the pretty thick count of the Pidgeotto line here. We also have one copy of Ditto Prism Star just to give us the flexibility of evolving into a Behem or a Pidgeotto if we choose to. Uh, we also have one copy of Mew. This is going to be to get around things like Tag Bolt GX or Crossbreak GX or even uh, Naganadel's Venom Shot. Spread damage in particular is something this deck I think really struggles with overall and Bench Barriers can be really good at preventing the sniping, some of the sniping effects at least that we have in the current format. Uh, then from there, the only other Pokemon we have is going to be one copy of Fion. I do have to confess, I actually got this idea from Azul uh, over on his channel, Azul GG. Uh, kind of funny, I was actually almost done putting this uh, deck together, and then I saw his list had a Fion. I was like, oh, Fion, that seems too good. We got to we gotta put this uh, in the list here. So uh, big shout out to Azul for the Fion idea. I thought this was really cool. Uh, it has the ability... Uh, Whirlpool Suction, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may have your opponent switch their active with one of their bench Pokemon. If you do, discard all cards attached to this Pokemon, put it on the bottom of your deck. So it's like kind of a perpetual way we can force our opponent onto the bench and make them bring up something else. It's like a pseudo uh, custom catcher sometimes. So I think I this list actually was like, I think probably, I think maybe only like, one two cards different after or prior to seeing Azul's list. I think this was a Mars Shadow I had in the deck before, just to bump uh, chaotic swells. But the Fion seemed really good. But uh, so yeah, that big credit to him for that idea. Going on to the trainer cards, uh, let's start with our supports. We have four copies of Professor Elm's Lecture. So search your deck for three Pokemon, 60 HP or less. Reveal them, put them into our hand. This is our ideal first turn supporter, but it is even good in the mid and late game sometimes. So we can grab ourselves a Pidgey. Behem and like a Pidgeotto even for the next turn because Pidgeotto does have 60 HP so we can search it out with the Elms lecture here. Uh, so this is going to just allow us to set up our bench. We are very reliant reliant on a full bench and it's just going to help us fill that bench up as soon as possible. Uh, from there we have four copies of Cynthia. This is going to be our primary form of shuffle draw. Shuffle and draw six into our deck. We do have two copies of Tate and Liza as well. This is going to be Shuffle and Draw 5, or we can switch our active with one of our bench Pokemon. So we're playing this just for the extra utility of being able to switch with something on our bench, uh, just because we're not as reliant, I think, on U-Turn board in this iteration of Behem as maybe like the previous version was back at Worlds, because the Clefairy Doll or the Lily's Pokedoll, it doesn't actually need U-Turn board every time 
uh, you force it into the active spot because it's going to get knocked out and you can just promote another Behem or something like that. So we don't run probably as many U-turn boards as I had in previous lists uh, for the prior format. So Tate and Liza, on the turns we don't have U-turn boards, sometimes we can just switch and get, get to attacking. And then from there we have two copies of Copycat as well. Big fan of Copycat in this deck. Shuffle your hand into, shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw for each card in your opponent's hand. So we are going to be shutting off our opponent's access to like what a third of their deck or like a quarter of their deck, something like that. So being able to turn off those item cards means that our opponent's naturally going to have a larger hand size than normal, meaning Copycat is going to be very good uh, against a lot of different matchups out there. So from there, we also have four copies of Poke Year just to dig seven cards deeper and hit those supporter cards whenever we need them. Uh, we have a bunch of searching options for Calm and for Treasure. You know, we are very reliant on searching Pokemon out of our deck every turn, so we're going to need a lot of search. Obviously, Treasure is going to be good at searching out our evolution or our main evolution line. Also, getting our Gumi as well. And oh, I totally forgot to even go over Gumi. What am I doing, guys? <laughs> so this is actually one of the cards that was in previous incarnations of the deck that I think is still worth playing going forward for the Sticky Membrane ability. As long as it's your active, your opponent's attacks cost one more. So this is really good against a number of different things out there. Just item locking your opponent, making it harder for them to attack you in the process. We can throw down a U-turn board on it and just switch between it every turn if we need to. So this is going to be our ideal starter in the deck as well, too. Uh, but going on from there, our other primary wall Pokemon, of course, is going to be the new Lily's Pokedoll. It's a really cool new card. Kind of harkens back to the old Robo Substitute we previously had back in Phantom Forces. But it has 30 HP, and you play this card as if it were a 30 HP colorless basic Pokemon. And it says, at any time during your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is your active, you may discard all cards attached to it and put it on the bottom of your deck but then this Pokemon can't retreat. And more importantly, if it's knocked out, your opponent does not take any prize cards. So we're trying to just item lock our opponent, promote the Pokedoll, and then our opponent doesn't take any prizes on their turn, and we just continue that loop, ideally until we win the game here. Uh, up next from there, we have one copy of Great Catcher just to choose what we want to take knockouts on. The Fion is nice, but our opponent does get to choose what they promote, whereas Great Catcher, we do have to discard two cards, uh, and it is limited to GXs and EXs only, but we do get the flexibility of choosing for our opponent, which is really, really good. Uh, then from there, we have three copies of Acrobike to dig a little bit deeper. This is actually a card I am going back and forth on. I've been trying, I've had some builds with Acrobike, I've had some builds with Pokenav, because I feel like they fill a similar purpose. Um, not sure which I like more. Uh, one day I'll, I'll have Acrobike and, I'll and then I'll say, man, I'm not hitting what I want. So then I'll switch to Pokenav. So feel free to play with this. But Acrobike seems to be the more general useful out of the two, out of the two even though it doesn't let you dig quite as deep. Uh, but it says, look at the top two cards of your deck. Put one card uh, into your hand, discard the other. So this is going to be one way we can dig and hit our triple acceleration energies on the turns that we need them. So I had Pokenav, like I said, in the deck at one point as well for a similar reason, and Acrobike fills that same role. So feel free to experiment with that, guys. I'm not sold on either one just yet, but right now Acrobike is, as you can see, in my current iteration of the deck. Uh, and then from there, I believe the only other trainer card we have is two copies of U-Turn Board. So it reduces our retreat cost by one, and then if it gets discarded from play, you put it back into your hand. So we can throw this down on Pidgeotto's, Gumi, whatever it might be, uh, to retreat into our Behemoths. Um, every turn so it gives us a free retreater in between knockouts and then from there of course four copies of triple acceleration energy to round out the list we can only attach it to evolution pokemon and it provides three colorless energy and normally it does get discarded uh after your turn but thanks to behem it does go right back into the deck and we're just going to try to chain these over and over as you guys can tell so yeah guys that's going to be our look at behem but i'm going to quit rambling let's head over into some games and we'll show off how this thing looks in action okay All right, so we do win the coin flip. Yes, we would like to go first, that is for sure. All right, that's actually a decent hand. Um, we'll start with the, well, we're going first, so maybe our opponent can't take a knockout. That's the case. I think I'll actually start the B or the Elgium here. If we were going second, I would consider starting Pidgey, but yeah, we're just going to start with this guy. And if we could top deck like a U-turn board, that wouldn't be bad. Interesting, it's gonna be Lost March, so maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe we will get knocked out turn one. I haven't played against Lost March in a long time, so I'll have to see how this is going to go. But I feel pretty good about this. Uh, the 
the Gumi and our Clefairy dolls are going to be really, really good. And what do we do? We have another Pidgey in hand. So I think I might just go for the Pidgey Odo here. Yeah, I think we'll do that. And do we save the other Pidgey for communication? Um, I think I'm actually just gonna get down all of the Pidgeys here in this case. Leaving that'll leave us with a potential wall target as well on the bench. So we'll just do this. Because we don't have a triple acceleration energy in hand, so we need a way to dig, I think, pretty aggressively next turn. So just going to pass over to our opponent. So let's see how Lost March is going to look with Cosmic Eclipse now. So we're going to see Trumbeak. I'm actually excited if they do. Okay, and they do get rid of a Cynthia. That's good. That actually puts us closer to a Triple Acceleration Energy since we already have a Supporter in hand. So we're going to see Hoppit come down. So how are they going to power up not to? Are they going to go for like a Welder Engine? Uh, just curious. Or like, hmm. We'll have to see. So we'll see Elm's Lecture. I imagine we might see uh, probably the new Cottony in here. I'm not sure if they'll play Whimsicott. I would imagine probably not. Uh, but Cottony seems good in here if, uh, you know, they run into like Reshiram Chars or Reshiram Zekrom or like ADP or something like that. So two Hot Pips and a Skip Loom. I'm fine with that. I'm really not concerned with their damage output here. Uh, just really concerned about them taking a knockout and they do not. So I am happy with that so we actually have a pretty good turn lined up here so we'll do this we will go for the elms lecture grab two pidgeotos and a gumi i think that's fine with me so we'll do that and we can actually dig pretty aggressively this turn we have three pidgeotos and an acrobike still so no draw supporter no problem Go for the airmail. And nice. We do hit the triple acceleration energy. So, I mean, I mean, I hate to say it, that might even be like close to game over at this point. Getting the turn two lock like this. Uh, sure, we'll grab the Cynthia preemptively. Another airmail. And nice. We do get in our triple acceleration energy. So, yeah, we'll do this. And I think I'll actually... Oh, wait. I forgot we have another Acrobike, too. So, sure. We'll go for Acrobike as well. Ooh, that's actually a little bit tricky. You know what? I think we can actually go for the Behem here. I'm actually not too worried about losing one Clefairy Doll, because I think our, we're going to take the first prize anyways. But in this case, we'll do this. And next turn, we can communication Gumi away for a, another L gym. All right, so hopefully our opponent doesn't scoop to us. <laughs> We're not this soon. I want to play this game out a little bit. And we do get U-turn board. That's really good. If we do decide to go the, the Gumi route, of course. So we do see Skip Loom. Hopefully our opponent has energy and like a supporter or something. I do want to actually play this game out, see how this goes. Very curious to see how they are building their Lost March deck for the new Cosmic Eclipse format here. So we see two jump ups and they do have a grass energy. So they are at least going to be able to do, you know, a little bit here. We'll have to see if they have any, oh man, they did not have a supporter. So. We might get the well played after this turn, guys, depending on what their top deck is. Oh, super, super busted top deck. So we'll do this. And I think I'm actually fine going the Gumi route because they're going to need two energies to attack into us. I just don't think they're going to get there. So I think we have a really good lock this early on in the game, which is really good. So we'll go for the airmail. We'll go for the Behem. Yeah, so this is like exactly how you want this deck to look. It really couldn't set up too much better. If we had started the Gumi, I think that's maybe the only thing. Oh, uh, here we get the victory screen. So I really don't blame our opponent. We had the lock going in full effect there. All 
All right, so we do in the coin flip. Yes, we would like to go first. We see some Pika sleeves, or a Pika deck box, Charizard sleeves. Not sure if that tells us anything about what we're playing against. So what do we want to start with? I might start with Ditto, potentially. Yeah, I don't hate that in this instance. And we have a really good turn lined up. Really good first and second turn, at least. Ooh, and this is ADP. That actually could be problematic for us, especially if they have a way to get the Terminal Alter Creation GX. So ADP definitely has a really good matchup against non-GX decks, which is a bit unfortunate. So we get, what? I think this is what we do. Yeah, I think I like that. I would like to get Gumi as well, because that's going to be really good at maybe delaying Altered Creation by a turn. And even though our opponent doesn't have too much in play, I actually will get down the Shrine, just because the 10 damage is very relevant against th this card here. So that we're just going to pass back over to our opponent. So this is going to turn a 4-shot into a 3-shot, thanks to the Shrine. And if they don't bump it, even better. But I am definitely fully expecting a Chaotic Spell to come down. So here we are going to see Cherish Ball. And big question is, do they have the means of getting the turn one altered creation GX? That's like the big thing we really want to avoid here. If we can just capitalize on them needing two attachments, uh, you know, that's going to be good. And if we can find our Gumi, that might even help us out and buy us another turn from there. But we'll have to see. Depends if our opponent is playing Ends Resolve. Are they playing Rayquaza GX with like energy switches? Okay, so that answers that question. Hopefully they don't have the energy plus the switching method. Okay, and they do get the energy, which is really unfortunate. Oh, and just a pass. That is fantastic, actually. So, yes, we will do this. Um, I actually might go for the Gumi. Or actually, no, I think we go for another Pidgeot, because I think we really want to get this lot going immediately. And Pidgeot is going to allow us to dig a little bit deeper. And we have, we still have four treasures in deck, so we can still get the Gumi if we want to. Here, we just want to kind of set up our engine a little bit more if possible. And we're going to go for the Cynthia. Nice. So this is a fantastic hand. So yeah, we're going to go for the airmail. Um, I think we go for the bike here in this situation. Go for airmail again, and we get the Gumi. That's awesome. That way we don't have to burn this treasure. We will attach here, and I guess we bike. And I think I do want to keep the shrine just in case of some healing shenanigans or something like that. And yeah, we're going to go for the Mysterious Noise. Alright, so we have the lock. We just need to find a U-turn board. That's the next order of business. But if our opponent doesn't have a switching method, I want to buy us another turn and make sure we're going to delay Alter Creation one more turn. Because if we just promote the Clefairy Doll, they could still burn their GX attack. And I kind of want to make our opponent... Uh, oh, but they have the Mallow and Lana. That's a bit, a bit of a bummer. And they are going to discard the rest of... Or some of their hand, at least. And we are going to see the Ultra Creation GX. So that is definitely a bummer for us. So we'll go for that. Go for the uh, Copycat, I think. So I think I'm actually going to discard the Copycat in this situation. Uh, let me check our U-turn boards as well. So you do have two in deck. Um, hmm. Just thinking, if we go for the air mails and hit the the energy, we can just use Tate and Liza, and instantly retreat. But sure. 
sure we'll get down the Clefairy Doll. And we're just going to go for the Tate and Liza here. That is a bummer. We get none of the cards we need. We are going to thin a little bit. We have to get we have to get energy and the U-turn uh, board off each of the air of the airmail. So we get this one. Now we just need our U-turn board, and we're going to be in good shape. Okay, so we're going to get Acrobike. That is going to get us a little bit closer. It's going to be a huge Acrobike. And unfortunately, we whiff. So. We are just going to have to... Yeah, we're just going to have to pass over to our opponent, which is definitely a bit of a bummer here. But they really haven't done too much. Like, even before they, they got item locked, they didn't really have much to play down. So that is the one thing is going for us. They haven't had a counter stadium as well. So if, if this shrine just stays for a while, that also could be good. And they do have a Cynthia, so <laughs> I guess I guess maybe they top deck that. I'm not sure, but that's certainly a bummer for us. Missing the lock here. Now, one thing is good, the Gumi is forcing him to keep committing energy to a Pokemon that's already damaged, and they have three water energy there. Another there. We're going to bench Keldeo. Hmm. Alright, so let's see where they put their energy. Okay, so it looks like we're just going to power up the Keldeo. Makes sense. They're going to try to force us into like an 8 prize game, probably. And luckily, they have not been able to bump the Shrine. That's something that's really been going our way here. But really, as long as we get the first Shrine tick down, that's really the only thing that matters, is going from 280 to 270. But nevertheless, you know, if it stays like this for a while, this might um, turn a 3-shot into a 2-shot somehow. So what do we do here... Do we go for another Pidgeotto? I actually, like, don't hate that idea either. So, sure. I think we'll actually do this. Alright, so we're going to go for the airmail. We do get U-turn board. We will hang on to that. Um, yeah, that's fine. Airmail again, we can get... Kind of like the idea of getting Fion, because we have two Poké Dolls that can hold us over for a bit. Um, sure, we'll give ourselves the option to use that at the very least. So here we'll go for the Mysterious Noise and send up Louis Pokedol. And, uh, you know, I still feel I'm honestly kind of decent. Our opponent had kind of a slow start, it, which, I mean, and we did whiff uh, a turn of attacking, so maybe it evens out. But um, since our opponent hasn't had, like, a super oppressive start, I think we can still maybe make this work. So here our opponent is going to knock out the Clefairy Doll. That makes sense. Looks like they're just thinking where they want to attach their energy. Maybe just see another energy come down on each of them in case of Gumi. Okay. Just going to do that. That's fine by me. So here we will get down. Or just promote the Behem here. I think we will attach that. So we'll get that down. Another Poké Doll. And what our opponent is a six card hand. So we'll just go for the Cynthia here. So we need triple acceleration, and we do get it. That's really good. So we'll go for Poke Gear. Nothing there. And so we're just going to start using airmail, start setting up our hand for our future turns. So we'll go for the L-Gym. Ok, 
He has a great catcher. And Elm's Lecture. And we're actually just going to treasure away the Elm's Lecture. I don't think we're going to need that anymore this game. Uh, just to preemptively grab another Behem, just to increase our odds of our top deck being a little bit better here. And we're just going to go for the old Mysterious Noise. Go up to 250. If our opponent doesn't bump this stadium, we actually might be able to do some cool stuff with, like, Great Catcher or Fion to, like, put pressure on something else while we, um, while we knock this thing out from the bench. So if our opponent doesn't have the counter stadium, I think we're going to be in a fantastic spot to win. And we just see the ultimate raid. That's huge, guys. So now, if we get ourselves a Fion or we, if we just use Great Catcher, we're going to be in a good spot because uh, ADP is going to go up to 270. Then in between our next turn, we're going to be able to uh, we're going to be able to have it get knocked out. So I might even potentially great catch our way this other shrine and bring up the other ADP here. All right, so we will get down the. L gym. So we're gonna go for this. Get rid of the shrine, I think, and the Tate and Liza. Or maybe the Cynthia. Maybe we should keep the shrine in case of Chaotic Swell. Um Sure, maybe just in case we will. We have Pidgeotto, so I'm not too worried about our draw supporters. So, yeah, we just need triple acceleration energy. This is going to be a fantastic turn. I mean, either way, we're going to take three prizes, but I do we want to continue the lock while we do so. So we're going to treasure. We're going to get rid of a U-turn board. I don't think we're going to need that. We will... I'm sure, we'll grab him. What else do we get rid of here? Because I do want to thin a little bit more. Uh, I think we can maybe safely get rid of... A Bahia, maybe? Um, hmm. Well, we'll airmail once, I think. I really want to hang on to all of these. So, we'll grab Fion, I suppose, here. Oh, we still need a Clefairy doll as well. Okay, but we got the triple acceleration energy. That was the important thing. <laughs> And we will go for the airmail, grabbing. Um, hmm. Sure, we'll just go for Pokemon Communication. So, fortunately, we did not get another Clefairy doll. I mean, we ha I think we had to prioritize getting down the triple instead. But we in Communication, we'll just put back the... Uh, Behem, I think that's fine. Get Gumi here. And let's see. We've, we might even get a Clefairy to off the prizes in between turns, which could be good as well. So we'll just do this and go for Mysterious Noise. And like I said, the Bench ADP will get knocked out from Shrine Damage. And our opponent's going to go down to two prizes, so we really need to hit a Clefairy Doll on this next turn. And we need our opponent to also whiff uh, a Mallow and Lana. And we do hit Clefairy Dots. Super good. Mew, not very good. We can treasure that away at least. And a Behem. So pretty solid prizes there. Uh, one thing that could hurt us is if, like, I don't know, if they play Judge, maybe. That could be kind of an annoyance. But we have three Pidgeotas. But I like this hand. We have another. We have a second Elgin Ray to bench. Behem to go with it. Clefairy Doll. Uh, U-turn board to retreat Gumi if they, for some reason, don't knock it out, which I'm fully expecting them to. And here we get the well-played, so maybe just the concession. If they don't have the stadium or, like, a way to retreat or something like that, then... Because they theoretically could retreat and just knock it out with Keldeo, but I guess Keldeo gets knocked out as well if they don't have the uh, counter stadium. So, yeah, they've really just seen the Chaotic Swell. We have not seen it this turn. Or this game, I mean. 
Okay, so they're gonna go for Cynthia Caitlyn. So if they do get the swell, that does kind of put them in the game a little bit more here. But they would, oh, they have Mal, oh, okay. They're getting back the Mal and Lana. I forgot they're playing Cynthia Caitlyn right now. So if they need Chaotic Swell, that's the big card. And they do get it. Now, if they don't bench anything, well, they would still be a little bit short of a knockout if we did use the Fiona to bring up this ADP. Hmm. All right, so we're just gonna see them retreat. So we could play the Fion on our next turn here and force them to bring this up, but then they just play the Mallow and Lana on this. I want them to burn the Mallow and Lana on the Keldeo. That's what we want to force them to do, I think. Okay, so yeah, we'll just promote the Elgium here. We will evolve for sure. Uh, we're just going to treasure away the Mew. Not very good in this matchup. Uh, we can just take a peek through our deck here. Yeah, so most of our deck is live. And yeah, we're just going to go for the airmail. Do get Shrine. It's good. We can bump the Stadium. Now we do need triple acceleration energy. Ugh, this is getting sketchy, guys. If we miss this, I mean, we don't instantly lose, but it feels a lot worse. Oh, thank God, and we do get it. Uh, that was about to be so sketchy. So yeah, we will do that. We'll get this down. Like I said, I want to force them to use Mal and Lana on the Keldeo and not the Archisaga Palkia. So it's still pretty close, guys. If we, because these are our last two uh, Pokey Dolls here. Uh, and they do have the swell. That's actually pretty, pretty important, unfortunately. So yeah, there's still definitely a chance that, that we lose this. Our opponent just needs to knock out one more Pokemon, and we're kind of counting on here to burn the Mao and Lana on the Keldeo. Because right now the... Okay, and they are going to play it. That's exactly what we want to see. So next turn... And how many of these have they played? They've only played one. Oh, and just a pass. That's that's actually gigantic. Yeah, we'll go for the airmail. Definitely grabbing the triple acceleration energy. Airmail. Definitely grabbing triple acceleration energy just to set us up for a couple of turns here. And airmail again, grabbing. Another triple acceleration energy, I think. So yes, we will put this on the bottom of our deck. Promote the Elgem. Do that, do this. And Mysterious Noise. Alrighty, so if our opponent... Our opponent needs to do something with this. They need another Malawin Lana if they want to save this guy. Uh, but here we get the well plate, so maybe we just get the... Maybe we're going to get the concession here, if that's the case. Because they need energy, and they've gone through a good bit. They have six in play. Plus, what, another... what? Four, seven, nine. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's just the victory screen. So maybe they were out of energy. I think that could have definitely been the case there. So we took a super long, grindy game, but we did finally get there, guys. All right. So we see a fire deck box and fire coin. So we. 
could be playing against abilities art. I've been playing against a good bit of a uh, Reshiram Charizard on the ladder lately. Also, a little bit of Breaks art here and there as well. Let's see though. And we do lose the coin flip. Kind of a bummer. Hopefully, we can start with uh, Gumi at the least. That's definitely going to be our ideal starter, especially if we're going second. And hmm. Yeah, I think we just start with the Pidgey here. I think Fion has to be on our bench. Yeah, so we'll definitely start with that. And just waiting on our opponent here. Yes, we will bench the other Pidgey, and we'll just click done from there. So moment of truth, are we playing against? We do see Breaks Art. Okay. So I feel pretty good about this just because we are going to lock their hand. Like, green stacks in particular are very item reliant. And basically, we're just going to give them access just to their supporters. And I guess their stadiums as well. So they're basically just going to be able to welder greens and maybe like Jesse James if they if they play that as well. Um, now, the one thing we are going to have to be on the lookout for are going to be uh, healing cards like Malo and Lana. Or if we whiff the lock for a turn, being able to heal off stuff with great potions, mixed herbs, if they play that stuff too, could be an issue. Uh, but here opponent just having a green, so this is actually, ooh, and they are playing unidentified fossils, so this is, I guess, their, their Pidgey tech, if possible, but if they actually set up the Amistar successfully, I think we lose. Because <laughs> even though we ourselves are an item lock deck, um, <laughs> we also are very susceptible to item locks. So let's see here. This Pokemon can't retreat, so... Yeah, we're actually going to force them to bring this up. Sorry, buddy. We aren't going to be... If you want to move this thing, you're going to have to discard it. I don't know what your stadium or your, uh, like, fossil line is going to look like, but we don't want to see that. So here we're just going to go for the communication. We'll put the Pidgeotto back in deck. Grab ourselves an Elgium, it appears. Just take a peek through our deck real quick to see what we have. Um, we have both Goomies, that's good. We have Ditto, all Poke Dolls. We prized one triple. We have both U turn boards. But yeah, if they successfully set up the Amistar, that's going to feel really bad for us. So we're just going to do this. And we will definitely do this. Grab the Tate and Liza. And I think we will do this as well. So. Sure. We'll just click done from there. So. Now Pidgey could get knocked out, which would be a bummer. But um, hopefully our opponent is forced to just discard this. Hopefully they not, do not have the switch to just switch it onto the bench. That's the big thing we want to avoid here if possible. So we're going to see Poke Ear. That is not a switch. That's good so far. And another Welder. Again, fine by me. Really don't mind that too much. So we're going to get rid of a Break Sard. I'm fine with that. Fewer attackers we have to go through, the better. So more likely they're going to try to, like, force us to knock out this and a bunch of Volcanians, I would assume. It's probably going to be their plan of attack here. And, okay, they did have to discard it, so Fion coming in clutch right here. Otherwise, we might have been in uh, a bad spot. So, luckily, we do have an Elms. We have Behem and the Triple ready to go. So, we can kind of live off this hand for, I think, a couple of turns here. So, I think we probably have to go for Gumi, Elgium, and probably Pidgey. Maybe Pidgeotto, we could probably do that. Alright, so we will promote the L Gym. We get Pokemon Communication, that's fine. We don't really need that right now. But here we're just going to go for Elm's Lecture. Grab an L Gym for sure. Definitely grab a Gumi. And we can grab... I might grab Pidgeotto, actually. So, yeah, we can do that. Because if we airmail into another Pokemon, we can actually communication for Pidgey if we choose to. Or we can even save the communication for a Behem for next turn. 
or maybe ooh, maybe we should have actually held on to the Gumi in case we hit the uh, Clefairy doll here. Okay, so just Poke Gear, so nothing too special. So I will burn the Poke Gear just to try to thin some more cards out of deck. We do hit Cynthia, that's fine. That's going to be a little bit better than Tate and Liza uh, on this next turn. So yeah, we managed to dodge the Amistar coming into play. Otherwise, guys, we would have been in so much trouble. We would have been so screwed because we can't play down the Poke Dolls or anything like that. Uh, but here we're just going to go for the Mysterious Noise. And we're going to promote the Gumi here. And let's see, kind of worried about Jesse and James a little bit. But I mean, yeah, if our opponent discards two Weezings, oh, but here they do not have the Jesse and James combo. Okay, that is fine with me. So if they're going to get three cards out deck, that's something we always have to, I think, be mindful of here. I mean, I don't know if they're playing the Weezing and Jesse James combo or just Jesse James by itself. Um, but we do have to be mindful of that not to play our hand on too low. We can always draw out of it with Pidgeotto at some point, but uh, we'd never want to catch ourselves with like a zero card hand and just rely on airmail to hit a supporter. So I really wish we had Copycat. Uh, whenever we finally draw into those, uh, we, we did play one already, but... We hit our other one. We're gonna start being able to draw so good here. Okay, nice. So we do get uh, a Pokemon. Now we definitely want to find that L Gym yet again. We want L Gym and probably a Clefairy Doll. I think those are gonna be our ideal sort of um, our ideal so cards to hit. So I will do this. I'm actually going to Giant Heart the way the Tate and Liza here as well, just to thin it out of deck, get us a little bit closer to finding these other pieces that we need for the turn. So we'll go for the Cynthia. And okay, yeah, this is a pretty good turn. We'll go for the airmail. And we do hit the Clefairy doll. That's so, so good. Yeah, and next turn, we're gonna be able to stabilize a little bit better with this Elm. So I'm really liking this. So we'll go for the Clefairy doll. We got the communication. And we do have to be mindful of Jesse James. That is something that would be terrible. Uh, for our hand. What am I going for here? Oh, yeah, we're going for an LGM in this case. And, yeah, so we're just going to go for the Mysterious Noise here. And if we do have to discard cards from the sand, that's going to feel really bad, but we're... I mean, this is kind of what we have to do right now in the game. So, moment of truth do they have. If they... I feel like we can survive kind of if we if we just have to discard two cards i think we maybe can discard the elm and the oh here they're gonna go for welder okay that's really good <laughs> i really wanted to keep this hand in particular for this next turn so here we might even see just a harder treat in a volk potentially and we are going to see the brilliant flare okay so again, I really don't mind our opponent growing their hand size because that just means copycat is going to be a little bit more effective in, in the late game once we find our other copy. I forget if it's a prize turn. We'll have to check when we Elm on this next turn. But Elm is definitely going to be a, a great supporter for this turn. I really want to get down second Pidgey. Uh, we want to get down another Gumi and then uh, Elgium as well. All right, so we'll do this. And yeah, we'll just, we'll definitely do this. We have to do this. Oh, and actually it doesn't even matter. We're gonna take three prizes. So the Jesse James combo won't even hurt us that much if our opponent does get it off. So that's definitely good. So we'll go ahead and yeah, we'll go for the Elms lecture first. Get El Jim, Pidgey, and we will get a Gumi here. And airmail getting. Ooh, we could get Pidgey Odo for the following turn. Kind of like that. I mean, communication might be a little bit better here, though. Because we have the trip already hand. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Because the communication could theoretically become a Pidgey Odo if we top deck like Behem or something like that instead. 
and we will go for the Mysterious Noise. I feel pretty good about the state of this game. So even if our opponent is going to take a knockout in the Gumi, I'm not really too worried about that. They will need to Welder actually, so yeah, if they want to take the knockout. So yeah, we're actually not even in any danger of the Jesse James combo. Okay, so yeah, this hand's going to be pretty good for next turn, I think. And they're just going to do... Oh, wait, no, they will get the knockout. I forgot. Gumi has 40 HP. I was thinking it has 60 for a second. So they will get the knockout. Actually, that might even be a little bit better for us, too, just because we won't have to find U-turn board or something like that. I don't think we... Yeah, we haven't discarded any yet, either. And so here we will see the high heat blast. And this is fine by me, though. Our opponent doesn't have anything else in play. Nice. So we do hit that. Um, I think I might... Yeah, I think I'm actually going to air mail a little bit preemptively here. Yeah, we'll go for another Pidgey Odo. That's definitely what we like to see. Nice, we get Behem, so that's good. We might even be able to sit on this hand potentially since we already have the triples ready to go. And we can just Acrobike from here. Grabbing the Poke Doll. I really don't mind getting rid of the Great Catcher. We still have Fion in deck. We really want to go that route as well. Um, but here we will get down the Behem. Get down the attachment. Treasure. We can get rid of the... I want to get rid of the Cynthia here. I want to save the communication. Just to make sure we can keep finding our combos over and over. And we'll do this. And I think I might just still Cynthia here. All right, so I think we'll just sit on this hand for now. Uh, I'll save the Acrobike as well. Really nothing else I want to see this turn. So we're just going to go for the Mysterious Noise. And our opponent needs another Pokemon to put down. Desperately, if they want to win this game. So we'll just throw up the Poke Doll here. I imagine we'll see, yeah, another Volk hit the board. That seems about right. Let's see, Welder. And how many supports have we gone through? Looks like we have one Cynthia left, one Copycat, and one Tate, Tate and Liza. And we do have Elm. I really don't want to play Elm, though. So here we're going to go for Air Mail. We do hit Mysterious Treasure. That is going to be good. We desperately need triple acceleration energy we do find ourselves cynthia so we might have to play the cynthia if we do whiff off of this acrobike here and ooh, we, we get copycat yeah that's that's definitely what we're going to go for this turn that's an absolute no-brainer this is going to be sick so we'll just treasure we can get rid of the i think elms lecture i want to keep mew in deck just in case we get pokemon communication and we'll do this grab our boy behem here We'll get down the U-turn board. Just put it back in deck for now. Uh, I think both of our... Yeah, both our Gummies are knocked out. So we might not even need U-turn board in this potential game. So here we just go for the Ditto. And we're just going to go for the Copycat. If we whiff the energy here, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> There's no reason for us to, though. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we had any problem hitting what we needed this turn. So yeah, we'll just do this. Go for the Mysterious Noise. And uh, now our deck is so low where we can actually keep just drawing. Um... Oh, we forgot to put down Clefairy Doll. I can't believe I forgot about that, guys. I got so stoked on the... Um... Oh, but here we get the victor screen anyway. So I got so stoked on the huge copycat. We forgot to even bench our Poke Doll. But nevertheless, I think we were going to win that game either way at that point. Uh, we are in such a good spot. So putting in tons of work there against the Breakzard deck. Alrighty guys, so that's going to wrap up our look at Behem here. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. As you can see, Behem I think definitely got a really big boost from Cosmic Eclipse. I mean, the deck still struggles sometimes. Like, I mean, you guys can see from, from the games, like when you whiff your, your attachment for turn, your opponent just kind of explodes and can run over you sometimes. Uh, but you know, if you can consistently keep streaming those triple acceleration energies, you're usually going to be 
in good shape but uh definitely i think a much better deck than it was before so definitely feel free to try this thing out and see how it does for you but if you guys did enjoy this content of course feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg or by picking up some merch from our online store rarecandytcg.com it would mean a lot but as always thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time